Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Q at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor QLogic with support from HGST, Violin Memory, and Mark Logic. Now, here is your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here in the QLogic booth at Oracle Open World 2014. We're at Moscone South, 65,000 people gathered uh, to, to see the, the biggest show in the database world, one of the larger shows in the IT community. Uh, this really just takes over all of San Francisco. Uh, so not only Moscone, but if you're looking for a hotel, you're probably out at the airport or in one of the surrounding communities. Uh, and so many different aspects of what goes on here. Uh, lots of the show talking about what's happening with cloud as uh, Larry Ellison uh, takes the reins as the CTO, uh, talking about infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, and of course lots of applications the software as a service offerings that they have. Uh, there's a big data session going on uh, all this morning. Jeff Kelly's uh, watching that, and we've been talking to some of those uh, partners uh, at the show here. Uh, but here in the QLogic booth, we're actually going to focus on QLogic for a segment. So joining me is uh, Vikram Karvat, who's the VP of Marketing, but re really one of the, the, the main product guys at QLogic. Cube alum joining us back here. Vikram, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me, Stu. All right, so. Oracle Open World, obviously an important industry show. Why is, why is it important for QLogic? Well, you know, first off, it's, uh, it's hard to believe, but it's been like 12 months since we last spoke, right? Uh, and uh, in our industry, uh, the cadence we work on, so much stuff changes. And uh, there's a lot of focus in different areas, you know, whether you're talking about virtualized infrastructure and you're you know, doing something with VMworld, or you're talking about some of the cloud shows, but uh, as far as mainstream enterprise and some of the things that are occurring there, uh, Oracle Open World is actually a great place to uh, get a sense of what's going on in the enterprise, which is still, uh, believe it or not, a uh, pretty significant portion of the uh, industry spend goes into traditional enterprise. Yeah, uh, great point, Vikram. So, you know, those of us, especially in the industry watchers, we always love to chase the new shiny thing yep. there. So uh, I love the Docker discussion that's going yep. on and what's happening in PaaS and, and everything there. But you know, Docker's not being discussed at this show. I mean, we're yep. talking about you know enterprise application, yep. what's living there, kind of the bread and butter for you know the a, a huge chunk, you know, majority of the revenue in the IT world. So. Yep. Uh, QLogic just had an announcement uh, that hit the wire this morning. Uh, can you t t tell us a little bit about you know, what's the news uh, and uh, you know, give us a little bit of behind the scenes as to what led us to this? Sure, happy to. So, just kind of as a little bit of a backdrop, yeah. uh, the last 12 months have actually been uh, full of change, good change uh, for QLogic. Uh, you know, in February, we uh, acquired Brocade's uh, uh, fiber channel adapter assets, and we've been working with them pretty closely to do some end-to-end -end stuff. In uh, you know a couple of months later, we announced the acquisition of certain uh, controller assets, Ethernet controller assets from Broadcom, uh, and uh, we've been on a roll since then with the additional uh, addition of some of those product lines, and that's what brings us to today. Uh, so. Uh, Traditionally, uh, QLogic has been very, very focused on working with our OEMs, and we're very pleased to announce that uh, uh, as of yesterday, uh, over 70 different OEM solutions on both the Ethernet and fiber channel side have gone out with the tier one server platforms with the Grantly launch. Uh, but th today, this morning, uh, what we announced is the same products that went out on the, uh, uh, the tier one server side, are now being offered in the QLogic channel. So both for e mainstream Ethernet controllers as well as for converged network adapters. Uh, it's pretty exciting for us because uh, it signals a little bit of a change for QLogic. Um, we're seeing a significant ramp in 10 gig adoption with the Grantly launch. And this affords us the opportunity to fulfill some of the uh, buying needs and purchase needs that are changing, they're non-traditional. So we've typically gone to more of an OEM side, but now we're investing more on the channel. 
All right, so, so Vikram, let's double click on that a little bit to give our audience a little bit of an insight. Uh, when, when I look at you know, those adapter businesses, uh, QLogic has had a presence in the channel for, for a number of years. Uh, obviously, strongest piece is, has been through the OEMs, uh, especially if you're talking from a fiber channel standpoint. Uh, you needed to have all of those server mm -hmm. OEMs as well as embedded solutions uh, when, it, when it comes to the storage side. Uh, when I looked at Brocade, Brocade was almost all OEM. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a little bit of channel here and there, but very much focused on the OEM. And Broadcom, you know, it, it was really synonymous uh, to the OEMs. I think from the one gig uh, Ethernet standpoint, it was all about the embedded solutions, mm -hmm. which meant it had to go through the OEMs because yeah. it was embedded. Yeah. Uh, so tell me what's different about 10 gig, why has the channel become more important, and how does that, uh, if we're talking on the Ethernet side, there's QLogic uh, mm -hmm. equipment and there's Broadcom, mm -hmm. uh, Heritage, you know, where, where do those things sort out? Well, I think uh, it's a sign of uh, a maturing market, uh, changing, uh, as I said, changing customer needs. Uh, certainly, for our, uh, if you look at our product portfolio, our fiber channel business is still very largely driven by the OEMs. Uh, the, the Ethernet business uh, has been traditionally largely driven by the OEMs, and uh, a good chunk of that uh, will still go through the OEM channels. But as markets mature, uh, the, the number of uh, routes to market change, because different customers have different needs. And what this allows us to do is service those needs. Now, historically for Ethernet, for 10 gigabit Ethernet for the last few years, not a big deal because that market was still nascent and the OEMs are really taking the lead in that. But what we're seeing now is as the market ramps, uh, the number of users that want to buy through different venues it has morphed. So, so, so Vikram, I wonder if you can clarify, because you say 10 gigs nascent. I mean, we're over 10 years into the adoption of 10 yep. gig. 10 gig is ubiquitous at the core. It's in just about, you know, huge proponent yep. of the, of the uh, switch base. But yep. you're talking about from the edge and last number I heard, I mean, I know it was over 30% of the overall server market, yep. but dominated by kind of the bladed solutions, right. which are, you know, what, over 90% 10 yep. gig, as opposed to kind of the rack and tower. Um, yep. You know, where are, where are we with, mm -hmm. with kind of that adoption? Now, I think you, uh, you hit it right on the head, Stu, because uh, we've hit that kind of, you know, 25, 30, going to 35% connect rate, and a lot of that has been driven by the blade side, uh, and of course those are, you know, a very much an OEM-focused play. But now, as we start talking about going from that 35% type of threshold, growing to that mainstream, going to 70 plus percent type of mix, those people that are picking up those things are buying uh, their IT infrastructure from a variety of sources now. And, uh, and that's what we're really driving for, is going from that 35 to getting to that 70% type of connect rate. So, and that's what I consider, you know, mainstream. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so here, just uh, p some people might be watching and saying, "Well, with one gig, we really we just put the LAN on motherboard and put that chip on there." Are we going to see that for 10 gig? Uh, because obviously, if it's just a standard component it, it, and it's on the motherboard, it tends to be a little bit cheaper and it, 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 it's easier to consume. Yeah, I, I think the market has changed in that uh, with 10 gigs, uh, there is a there's no single answer. Uh, there is a, a lot of choices that need to be made in terms of physical layer interfaces, how many ports you want, the type of functionality you want, uh, and it's no longer a, a simple decision for an OEM to just drop something on the motherboard. So we've seen most of our, the OEMs have adopted some sort of daughter card strategy, and we see that continuing for uh, some time to come. Uh, and it's actually, it's interesting because it's actually going to get worse in my view over time, because uh, the, the number of choices, which is good, is going to expand. We're talking about 10 gig today, and it was a choice between one and 10. Uh, 10 gig optical versus 10 gig base T. But now we have 25 gig coming downstream. We have 40 gig, we have 50 gig, we have 100 gig, we have low latency stuff, we have CNAs. I mean, if you look at that mix, the IO portfolio for most of our OEMs is going to expand dramatically over the course of the next three, uh, three to five years. All right, so let's switch focus a little bit and talk about uh, you know, the, the channel and who they're selling to. Uh, one of the things that really jumped out at me is uh, you've got the managed service providers called out, yeah. uh, which uh, 
what we would say in many ways has become the new channel uh, mm -hmm. for many of the mm -hmm. technology suppliers, uh, and it, it, it's a it's a growing, uh, it, it, you know, large, fastly growing uh, part of the market. Right. Uh, in addition to the enterprise that we've traditionally focused on, and then of course you've got above them you've got the, the web scale or hyperscale giant clouds of you know Amazon, Google, Yahoo, mm -hmm. and Facebook type right. people. So. Can you, the announcement that you've made, how does it fit for the enterprise and for the managed service providers, uh, and does it touch on any of, uh, maybe you can touch on how QLogic thinks about you know, those kind of 20 largest clouds out there okay. and how you interact with them. So the, uh, the announcement we made today is actually geared towards filling, filling a gap there. So if you look at what you just described, uh, on the one side, enterprise buying through, uh, through the traditional OEMs, on the other side, I wouldn't even say 20, I'd say the, probably the top five to eight uh, hyperscale uh, data center guys that have always bought stuff uh, directly from the ODMs, or not always, but have, they've moved to an ODM model. Um, and then in between, the MSPs that are kind of a hybrid between the two because they're servicing uh, uh, tier one enterprises in you know, a private public cloud type of infrastructure deployments, but they're under the same sorts of cost pressures and scale out pressure as they scale out as some of the hyperscale guys are. So they're taking a page out of the you know, books of some of the hyperscale guys saying, look, for certain of our applications and certain of our customers, the OEM product offerings are exactly the right fit. And QLogic plays into that through our traditional routes to market. But now we're servicing a new, a new set of customers and in order to address their needs, we're going to have to look at potentially stitching together our own solutions. We might have OEM branded servers in there, we might have OEM branded adapters, but we may also have alternatives. So as they look to those alternatives, we want to make sure that we have an offering that meets their requirements because they're, they're the customers at the end of the day. All right, so how should customers be looking at QLogic going forward? I mean, you, you, you talked at the beginning of the segment, we've had a lot of consolidation out in the market play. How does QLogic differentiate from the remaining players out there and you, what, what sets you apart? So, from, from a, a scale standpoint, with the addition of the uh, MetaXtreme 2 controller family, uh, we're essentially the number two player in, in Ethernet. So from, uh, from a user perspective, when they deal with QLogic, uh, they're dealing with the number one provider of fiber channel solutions and the number two provider of Ethernet. Where, you know, whether you want to buy those solutions or acquire them through OEMs or directly through QLogic, what you're getting is a, a QLogic support infrastructure that is backed by a significant position in either of these technologies. Uh, so you have the confidence when you buy these things that any issues that come up down the line there is going to be QLogic backing them up. And as we see industry consolidation, uh, your choices, especially on the Ethernet side, are do you want to buy something from the number, two, number one, number two guy, or do you want to buy something from the number four, number five guy that may decide doesn't want to be in the market? We made a conscious decision to double down and invest a significant amount of energy and uh, our resources in the Ethernet space. So we're going to be here for the foreseeable future and will be a major uh, provider of IO solutions for whether you're an MSP, uh, hyperscale guy, or an OEM. All right, so, so Vikram, with your product hat on, how are you guys sorting through this you know, huge increase in options that are out there. You know, it, it, was, it was real easy when it was just the 10X improvement on Ethernet, the yeah. 2X improvement on fiber channel. As you said, I, I mean, I'm having trouble keeping up with, you said 10 and 40 and 100 is what we had, and you added in 20, five, and 50. I, I mean, and Mellanox does a 56 on, on top of that. Yeah. So, you know, why do we need so much, so many options out there? Uh, you know, the, the 10X improvement did us so well for decades on the Ethernet standpoint. How are you guys sorting that out? How are you helping the industry drive this forward? Or, you know, is, is it be, where's it being driven from? How do you guys participate in? How, how, do, you, how do you sort all this out? Oh boy, that's, uh, that's a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Choose one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, the need for some of this is really driven by the fact that our customer requirements have changed. It used to be that it, an infrastructure solution met most of their requirements, but as their application workloads have fragmented, 
what they're and the amount uh, and people are focusing more on what what is the cost, what is the total cost of running these things, uh, what am I getting out of it, and now I have enough pools of these workloads where I need to start optimizing on a workload basis, and that's what's really driven the need. As as people look to optimize, they look for variety to drive that to drive that optimization. Uh, from our perspective, what we've brought to market is a uh, a lot of flexible solutions that people would take, you know, are able to take at either an ASIC level or an adapter level. Uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, crystallizing some of what you just said. Uh, yesterday, uh, we announced that uh, our Grantly programs uh, that we just went out. So we sh we basically are shipping over 70 new uh, solutions on the Grantly platforms. Five years ago, that 70 might have been 10. So the amount of complexity is increased a lot. Now what are we doing? So we're essentially, we've been restructuring, we've been scaling our resources to be able to, uh, instead of saying, hey, uh, you know, customer X, Y, or Z, here's a solution, now you have a series of them. Take your pick. Uh, and uh, it certainly has made our my product uh, hat uh, a little bit larger and a little bit more complicated, but uh, it's a necessity. That's what it takes to do business in this environment. All right. So. Change has been a major theme that you talked about. As, as we look forward through, through the rest of the year, is, it, is the Grantly release going to be one of the most important drivers of, of new business? Is, is there some other uh, technology or uh, you know, new, new, new use case or new use set that's going to drive it? What, what, what's the most important thing uh, helping adopt uh, some of the new technologies? Well, uh, Grantly is absolutely going to be huge for us. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, some of the capabilities that Intel has enabled in uh, these new platforms is driving a lot more I.O. Whether it's virtualized I.O. or bare metal type of infrastructure. So we're seeing, an, we're already seeing an increase in connect rate on our 16 gig fiber channel. And just because it seems like the, uh, the industry as a whole, uh, Grantly being a part of it, uh, is really uh, seeing uh, a significant ramp also on the Ethernet side. Uh, Ethernet is like a hockey stick right now for us. Uh, so th that right now, we're, we're, uh, we're doing our best just to keep up with what the demand is. <laughs> so we're, we're pretty happy with uh, where, the, uh, where our business is going right now. All right, so uh, Vikram, you know, as, as I look around uh, the, the cube that we have up here, uh, you know, optimize, simplify, accelerate, change. Uh, give us the bumper sticker when uh, people look back uh, as to what the new Q logic is, uh, you know, what, what should they be thinking about? Uh, I think uh, they should look at Qlogic as their uh, one-stop shop for I.O. solutions, whether it be Ethernet or fiber channel, and moving forward, uh, providing customers even more choices, not from only a form factor, but from a solution level. And there'll be more to come on that in uh, the near future. All right, well Vikram, always appreciate you coming in, sharing all the information, lots of uh, change which is, uh, Good, it sounds like, yeah. for QLogic yeah. and customers and the managed service providers and all the new solutions going out yeah. there. So uh, thanks very much for joining us. Right. Look forward to uh, keeping an eye on uh, everything that's going to come out of QLogic in the future. So uh, this is Stu Miniman with wikibon.org uh, and uh, our coverage from Oracle Open World uh, will continue after this break. <laughs>